Many is that you? Hey, this will just be explaining what I do when it comes to maintaining quality for my videos. Again, if you would like, you can comment what you personally do, or correct me if I said something that is wrong, etc. Overall, these are all the plugins slash programs you should need to be able to follow this tutorial. I will either make a Discord server with all the links or link everything in the description. I'm not sure which one I will do yet, but for now let's start the tutorial by opening up the base game with no enhancements and see how it looks. As you can see just opening up the game, you can hopefully notice how garbage the edges look in game on the gun and on certain areas in the scenery like the house. Granted this is partially because the settings were at nearly the lowest, but there still is room for improvement. For starters, let's import a proper inspector. To use this, simply open the application and click the small box on the right that shows the tools. Once you do that, this larger window should appear. Essentially, we are creating, or if you bought my pack, importing inspector settings to improve the overall quality of the game like the edges, reflectiveness, and ambient occlusion I think in some cases. Type in the Profile Search tab the game you want to apply the inspector to, so in my case, Call of Duty Black Ops 2, and go to that game's profile. For games like COD 4 and Redacted Black Ops 2, you will need to add the application on your inspector profile before anything else. Click that green plus and navigate to your game. If you bought my pack, you would just need to import my inspector like so and click apply, but if you didn't, just mess with the settings until you achieve something you like. After inspector, you want to download Reshade. I believe the Reshade version 5.9.2 is fine for every COD game, so I would just go with that. For Black Ops 2, you can use DirectX 10, 11, 12, but for any other older game, I think you should select DirectX 9. I didn't show it on screen, but when installing, you want to check all the boxes, click next, and you should be done. Okay, cool. Now let's open up your game and see what we have so far. Before we load a demo, you want to quickly make sure your settings are correct, then load into the game. I personally don't record in anything past native 1080, but if you are interested in that sort of thing, Riff made a tutorial explaining how to do that. I'll be sure to leave it linked somewhere. So when you load your game, I'm assuming it won't look too different. Maybe your gun will look more reflective depending on your inspector. I'm going to try to briefly run step by step how I would generally go about setting my game up and recording. Let's start with making a reshade. You can obviously buy the pack and just import my settings and skip this portion. But to make a very basic looking preset, I would look through and experiment with what is available. Now let's talk about actual in-game settings like applying a config. Configs aren't needed, but depending on your vision can help improve the look of your game. Like so. More importantly, the settings inside of the console can also help like the light direction and sun quality. It makes a huge difference. Also, don't forget to tweak your depth of field settings, as they can add a huge difference as well. Finally, when everything is set how you like it, what method of recording should we use? This is again preference, but I personally use DxTory majority of the time, and if I'm trying to use depth maps and green screens, I'll record using streams. Fraps, OBS, Shadowplay, and for some games, Avademo are all usable as well. Just pick whatever is best for you. I almost forgot to mention, additionally, you can also add custom textures into the game. So for example, custom normal maps, upscaled textures, or you can replace the texture altogether and for example, change the flooring on Hijacked or something. I remember someone made a pack for 4K textures, but I don't have a link for it, but I think there is a tutorial on this sort of thing that I will leave linked. If you want, I will provide my custom DSR textures in the pack as well. If possible, I'll try to show some before and afters of where we are at right now. Okay, let's quickly talk about dealing with low quality footage. For these two examples, I'll be using footage of boondocks at very low quality, and footage of Valorant clips downloaded from Twitter. Assuming you already remove the dead frames from the anime clips. Essentially, you would import whatever clip you are upscaling, or if you have a lot like me, you can import multiple and create a queue. Next, you would just explore and compare settings using the preview option and pick what you like the best. Again, if this is too much, I should have screenshots in my quality pack of some of my preferred settings for Valorant and low-quality footage. Also for reference, this is what the final product of the Valorant clips looked like. A significant difference in my opinion. 
Finally, let's move on to downloading high-quality footage for editing K-pop. For this, you can either use 4K Video Downloader or Flixmate. When downloading the footage, if the option to download it in 2K or more is available, do it. I usually just download it as an MKV file. Once downloaded, open up Handbrake. We are going to run it through Handbrake twice since importing MKV files in AE causes issues. We will handbrake the video once in full quality using either production preset, and then a second time using any preset that makes the footage lower quality. The reason for this is because we are going to use the lower quality footage as a proxy for the higher quality footage to make editing in After Effects an easier process. If you edit on Sony Vegas or are editing clips in 1080, you don't need to worry about proxies. Also, handbraking the same exact video will ensure the proxy is lined up with the actual footage. Okay, great. We made it to the rendering portion. I'm going to start in Sony Vegas since I sync footage in here more often than not. Before anything, make sure your project settings are correct, so for example, your frame rate and resolution. Then assuming you create an edit and you are ready to export, you would go to File Render as and select Videos for Windows for rendering in AVI and create a preset that matches your project settings. You can either render in Lagarith lossless or uncompressed, either one is fine. You would follow the same instructions if you wanted to render in MP4 with the only change would be adding the effect levels over the entire edit. This is to prevent older versions of Sony Vegas applying slight contrast on the render. Also for MP4, I'm not too sure what bitrate is ideal, but anything around 80 to 170 should be fine depending on footage quality. Now after exporting from Sony Vegas, you want to import the footage into After Effects. I'll explain each method that can be used briefly, and you can decide to experiment and find what is best for you. Okay, going down the list, let's start from what I personally use the most to least. New narrator here, so let's start with scale up, which I use the most. I like using scale up because, from my personal experience, it has always been able to maintain my video's quality without creating weird artifacts or over sharpening the footage. Using it is pretty simple. Just adjust the scale to your comp's resolution and select your setting of choice. Again, my pack will include screenshots of my settings for everything. When rendering the edit out of After Effects, I'll usually use the compression type None, but you can also choose Lagarith Lossless or Uncompressed just like in Sony Vegas. I'll most likely come back to rendering after going over the other settings as well. Next up is Topaz. I already went over this program in the tutorial, but essentially, I would render out the edit without a CC, upscale the footage, import the edit back into After Effects in a new comp, then apply a CC and render. While Topaz is flexible just like ScaleUp, I would recommend making a CC after you upscaled it, because sometimes the footage can interact with some effects in an odd way, like grain for example, and you will have to make changes or just remake the CC altogether. I'm going to include Instant 4K and Detail Preserving Upscaler together, because they are both essentially similar to each other and scale up. The only thing is, I haven't used them, so I don't have many thoughts. But in comparison to scale up, they just make the edges sharper. So again, just preference. But you would render with these plugins the same way you would with scale up. Now for whatever reason, if you are I guess in a hurry or just lazy, I'm not sure, you can always use After Effects resize setting right before rendering. With this, you won't need to make a new comp in a larger size, just check the box in the render settings and apply whatever resolution you want. I used to use this at one point, but any AI upscaler is more or less better, I'd assume. Okay, we are so close to being done. One of the last steps now is just creating a color correction to apply the finishing touches. Again, buying my pack, it comes with a base color correction that will generally look nice under most circumstances. It'll just need light editing and adjustments. But there are plenty of videos out there explaining how to create a decent color correction, so I'm sure you'll be fine. I personally don't go too crazy with my color corrections anymore if this helps, just contrast, tints, etc. Once I'm happy with my color correction, I will render out my edit and upload straight to YouTube from After Effects, because my internet is good enough for that kind of thing. But what if it isn't? Well then, I would use Virtual Dub to compress my video, then upload it afterwards. I also use Virtual Dub when sending collab parts to people. Converting the FPS to be double is optional since already having the edit in 2K resolution or more is giving us the VP9 codec. 
If you want to know what compression codec I use, it will also be in the pack. Now that your video is ready for YouTube, what about other social platforms? Well, I personally use Handbrake for converting my video into MP4. My settings are in my pack. And finally, after doing everything, your videos should come out looking at least somewhat better in terms of quality. I really hope you all learned something from this, and if you buy anything from me, thank you so much. I appreciate it. With that being said as well, I will be officially working on an editing pack that will include this and so much more. So stay tuned. Well, that's it. See you all soon.